President Trump did not try to calm his thousands of disappointed supporters. Instead, at almost the same moment violence was getting completely out of hand, Donald Trump sent his 224 tweet. The president said, Mike Pence didn't have the courage to do what should have been done to protect our country and our Constitution. Despite knowing the Capitol had been breached and the mob was in the building, President Trump called Mike Pence a coward and placed all the blame on him for not stopping the certification. He put a target on his own vice president's back. Mr. Pottinger and Ms. Matthews, when we ask you about your reaction to seeing the 224 tweet in real time, you both used the same imagery to describe it. President Trump was adding fuel to the fire. Mr. Pottinger, you made the decision to resign after seeing this tweet. Can you please tell us why? Yes, <clears throat> so that was um, the, pretty soon after I, or, or shortly before I'd gotten back to the White House, I'd come from off-site. Uh, I began to see for the first time those images on TV of the chaos that was uh, unfolding at the Capitol. One of my aides uh, handed me a sheet of paper that uh, contained the tweet that you just uh, read. Uh, I, I read it and uh, was uh, quite disturbed by it. Uh, I, I was disturbed and worried to see that the president was attacking uh, Vice President Pence for doing his constitutional duty. So the tweet looked to me like the opposite of what, what we really needed at that moment, which was a de-escalation. Uh, and uh, that's why I, I had said earlier that it looked like fuel being poured on the fire. So that was the moment that I decided uh, that I was going to resign, that that would be my, my last day at the White House. Uh, I, I simply didn't want to be associated with, uh, uh, with the events that were unfolding on the Capitol. Thank you. And Ms. Matthews, what was your reaction to the president's tweet about Vice President Pence? So it was obvious that the situation at the Capitol was violent and escalating quickly. And so I thought that the tweet about the vice president was the last thing that was needed in that moment. And I, I remember thinking that... Um, this was going to be bad for him to tweet this because it was essentially him giving the green light to these uh, people, telling them that what they were doing at the steps of the Capitol and entering the Capitol was okay, that they were justified in their anger. And he shouldn't have been doing that. He should have been telling these people to go home and to leave and to condemn the violence that we were seeing. And I'm someone who has worked with him. You know, I worked on the campaign, traveled all around the country going to countless rallies with him, and I've seen the impact that his words have on his supporters. He, they truly latch on to every word and every tweet that he says, and so I think that in that moment, for him to tweet out the message about Mike Pence, it was him pouring gasoline on the fire and making it much worse. Thank you both. And let's watch what others also told us about their reactions to this tweet. I don't remember when exactly I heard about that tweet, but my reaction to it is that's a, a terrible tweet. And I disagreed with the sentiment and I thought it was wrong. What was your reaction when you saw that tweet? Extremely unhelpful. Um, it, it, it wasn't the message that we needed at, at that time. It, it wasn't going to, um, the, the scenes at the U S Capitol were only getting worse at that point. This was not going to help that. It's already going to get worse. Certainly. And Ms. Hutchinson, what was your reaction when you saw this tweet? As a staffer that works to always represent the administration to the best of my ability and to showcase the good things that he had done for the country, I remember feeling frustrated, disappointed, and really, it, it felt personal. I, it was really sad. As an American, I was disgusted. It was unpatriotic. It was un-American. We were watching 
the Capitol building get defaced over a lie.